Welcome to this episode of the Smarter Business Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk to business people about interesting things that they're doing with video. And this time, this episode, for the first time, we have a repeat guest. Eric, did you know you were the first repeat guest on the Smarter um, Business Podcast? I want to be honest and say no, but then that makes it sound like I haven't listened to every episode, you know, so I'm caught. I feel like I'm really caught here. Gotcha. <laughs> but no, I didn't realize that. It's, it's yeah. an honor. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and part of the reason that it it seemed like a no brainer to uh, to bring you in for this episode is we've started tying these episodes to the themes that we have going on the creator network. And uh, this month's theme on the creator network is YouTube. So you are the authority. For the people listening, just as a podcast, I was pumping my hand in the air there. Yes. <laughs> I feel like you always got to do that when you're doing video you do. and podcast at the same time. You're like, all right, for the video people. <laughs> so, um, I I, when I was going to say real quick, though, on your friend. um, I think that's great that you're marrying the two. And uh, I was in, in on the last uh, call you did, and uh, it was pretty fun. It was an hour long call. A lot of people peace out after an hour. But, geez, we were on there for probably close to two hours after that. Wrecked my sleep for the next day. But it was worth it. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> the record that we set is actually Clark Dever uh, and and Sean Lewis and I, We I think we broke midnight the one oh, wow. <laughs> it was just i don't know like you can go down the rabbit hole right and um yeah there's always interesting yeah. things to talk about so well there's uh they're nice people and smart people and i um, willing to share and that's why it's cool having that community aspect to it and i um i give you a lot of credit for building that from scratch because that's not an easy thing to do and you know i got in in the beginning and i kind of pop in and out here and there and you can see just the the cohesion that's kind of starting to form and just the relationships and um, the confidence that people are getting from being engaged with the group. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. Yeah. We we've seen a lot of a uh, lot of growth with folks, um, which is exciting. And some people have like, you know, moved way down the path that they set out I, to go down. So I was actually five foot nine before I met Neil and <laughs> yeah. he just, you know, he got me on those growth hormones Rose. and, yeah. <clears throat> but now to bring it back to some of the content you're creating, now you can't fit into SUVs, apparently. So, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for context, um, if somebody doesn't know, if they didn't catch the last episode, I see in your notes here, thank you for providing as uh, episode 20. Um, I do a lot of content on YouTube. Uh, that's like my full time job now. And I like how I put these little like words in there to soften things. It's like my full time job because it still feels weird to me, you know? Right. Um, people ask me what I do and I just say internet marketing because I say, I feel like if I say YouTube, they're like, Oh, what are you doing? Like TikTok dance videos. I'm like, no, not at all. But um, you should consider it. Right. That would be, yeah, good. there might be some videos of me floating around <laughs> dancing at weddings after a few drinks, but <laughs> <laughs> I like to say it cause I'm a taller guy. I like to say it looks like those, uh, blow up things in front of the uh, used car dealerships when I dance. Right. But, uh, <laughs> As far as video, though, yeah, uh, YouTube is my background. I do a lot of um, when you go on YouTube, there's all sorts of different ways that people might consume your content. The majority of my content is YouTube search. So people are using YouTube as a search engine and they're landing on my content and then I'm educating them. And a lot of times I'm making affiliate sales or I'm pushing them to the channel or they're subscribing and uh, just growing a couple of uh, different YouTube channels that way. Excellent. So you, yeah, you, you referenced the notes, you brought us back to the path we're supposed to be going down here, which is, I would say that qualifies. I always ask people in one sentence to tell me what they do. There you go. You nailed it. Um, the other thing I like to do when we start out is just talk about, you know, business career or business journey, career journey. Um, I don't know. Uh, last time you were on, you already brought it up episode 20 it was called gaining traction through organic views that was august mm -hmm. um what's changed since august uh still doing some of the similar stuff but i've just been doing more and more tests on youtube uh trying different things out uh really trying to uh, explore how to create a hook in somebody's mind or a teaser in somebody's mind when they see your thumbnail and see the title on uh, youtube um that's something that i've struggled with because 
I try not to be like a clickbait marketer, you know, because I just I think a lot of people are just burned out from seeing clickbait and you're like, OK, like I don't even want to click on this because I know what you're doing kind of thing. And right. I've been trying to figure out a healthy balance of that, of like, how do you create something that creates intrigue, but it doesn't feel like you're selling your soul to get somebody to watch the video uh, and been seeing some success with it. Um, I think I told you before, just like a quick case study on that. Um, I had a blender video that did really well. I reviewed a bunch of different blenders. It took off. It was getting like a couple thousand views a day during COVID, especially. Right. Um, and uh, the thumbnail was decent, but it was just a typical thumbnail. Like you see the blenders, you could see my face on screen and it says best blenders. So then I tried something else and it had to do with the opening scene of the video. And it was the fact that, you know, I talked about this blender, it break dances on my um, countertop because when you turn it on, it just shakes all over the place. So I, I put that into the thumbnail and tried it out. And I just saw my click through rate just plummet on those, <laughs> on the oh. video. It like got cut in half and I was like, not a good idea. <laughs> So then what I did is I actually took some screenshots from the video and there was a smoothie test I did. I know I, I live a very fascinating life, Neil. Um, <laughs> but basically, I took a smoothie <laughs> and I tried like all these different blenders and I made smoothies and I poured them out on a plate and I took a chopstick and just kind of like a big continuous S just kind of drew through the smoothie. And what it does is it allows you to see the texture and consistency of the smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, and what I realized from doing that test is like some blenders just whipped it up like crazy. And some of them gave you this really nice texture and you could see it very easily. But what I ended up doing is I changed that thumbnail again and I put the bad kind of smoothie test, you know, if you can picture a plate with smoothie on it all whipped up and then a good one. And then I just put a um, red X in the corner of the bad one and a green check mark in the good one and just put smoothie test at the top. So now what happens is somebody's on YouTube, they happen to be searching Blender reviews, my video gets served uh, to them, but the thumbnail is really what grabs them. They're like, huh, like, what is that? Because who knows what a smoothie test is? Most people don't, I didn't until right. I researched it. So you're kind of creating that intrigue in their mind of like, well, which one was it that was the bad one? Which one was the good one? And what is this? What am I looking at? So that's the kind of stuff that I've been kind of working on and doing tests on. And um, the thing I like about YouTube is there's so much data and I've watched my click through rate actually jump up higher than it was before. Um, mm -hmm. And if people are unfamiliar, click through rate just means like somebody saw that thumbnail uh, and that's an impression. And if 100 people saw it, and five people clicked, I had a 5% click through rate. So I've been increasing my views after the fact of making the video just by kind of doing tests and tweaks on the thumbnails and trying to create a kind of a teaser of what somebody's about to consume uh, for the video. That's excellent because, uh, yeah, I would have no idea what a smoothie test was. And I do find from my own YouTube experience those those thumbnails where maybe you don't quite know what's going on, right? Which mm -hmm. that would qualify for do yeah. like <clears throat> they, they, they'll give you a little bit of a, uh, huh? What, what is that? Do I click yeah. on it? And then of course you have to deliver on the video end or else, uh, people don't stick around, but, um, that's, that's good. That yeah, I would click that. Yeah, I don't even I think, drink a lot of smoothies, you know. But. <laughs> I think it's just like, yeah, your brain naturally wants to close the loop on things. It doesn't like, and you know, uh, where I read about this first, um, they called it like a soap opera sequence, and it was a guy, Russell, um, oh, what's his name from ClickFunnels, Russell something. Uh, is it Brunson? Brunson? Yeah, Russell so, Brunson. I yeah. think so. Um, he had a good book about it, but he called it a soap opera sequence. And he, he was more so talking about email marketing. But basically, he's like, if you watch a soap opera, always before the commercial comes in, you have this like, boom, 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 boom. And there's like this big right. dramatic moment and it doesn't have any closure. And then when the soap opera starts up after the commercial, they close that. But then they have a new storyline going. And the reason they do that is they know that they can lose viewers during the commercial break. So they're right. trying to hook that viewer, keep them on during the commercial break and then close that loop. But then before the next commercial break, they're opening it again. So he was explaining that for email marketing. Like, you know, if you're sending a sequence and it's got, you know, somebody uh, opts in to your newsletter, they opt in for your free resource. You try and at the end of the email, set up like a hook into tomorrow's email. And it'd be like, hey, be on the lookout for tomorrow's subject line blah, 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 blah. And it creates that little bit of intrigue that somebody's like, they want to open that email the next day. Um, and in some ways, it's kind of what you're doing on YouTube is like, you're kind of creating that 
opening like hook loop or whatever you want to call it on uh, with that thumbnail and trying to put a story in the person's mind. And they're like, I got to I got to at least see this through and see what this is about. Excellent. Yeah. And, and I know that we've had discussions. You can do that on the other end, too. Right. Where the the instead of being like, thanks, have a good day. You've mentioned in some yep. of our discussions that you say, all right, the next video is here, like, yep, or, you know, see the rest of the series and you kind of continue, continue to have people go down that path. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, if you don't mind me humoring you on this, um, I just shot a video yesterday and it's been an idea that I've been <laughs> thinking about for, gosh, probably like four or five months ago, it popped in my head and I do some affiliate marketing. So I'll review different products and services. And some of them, there's like a ton of videos out there. So it's like, all right, there's clearly a lot of competition. So if you want to beat that competition, you have to create something that somebody wants to watch for a longer time period than the stuff that's already out there. So yep. usually what I recommend in that situation is watch those videos, have a critical eye, try to see where they might have missed things, go into the comments below. People will tell you what was left out or what they didn't like, that kind of stuff. Um, and the particular video I'm doing is... Uh, it's for a service called ConvertKit, which is an email opt-in subscription service, kind of similar to ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, a lot of those services, if you're familiar with them for the audience. Um, but I'm like, geez, how can I do this? So um, in this one, the hook is I actually got my dad on a, a Zoom call and we recorded it. And I had him log into my ConvertKit um, uh, software and create a landing page from scratch. So mm -hmm. the title is going to be ConvertKit versus Boomer. And then the thumbnail is going to be my dad, like squinting at a computer <laughs> screen and going, huh, you know, with this like kind of miffed looking face. So somebody, they probably won't necessarily get there from YouTube search. But in that particular one, my hypothesis with it is that they will watch other people's content on ConvertKit. And this will get suggested to them because right. it's a little bit different than what they just watched. And the important thing is, is I'm going to try to connect that story that I'm creating with the title and thumbnail in the first 15 to 20 seconds. So early this morning, I started editing that and I got like the perfect lead in. And it's my dad holding up uh, a piece of paper and laughing, you know, and he's saying, uh, you know, this is called paper. And the paper he's holding is the Google Doc that I had sent him with instructions on what I want him to do. And <laughs> you printed it out. Yeah. yeah. And in the instructions, <laughs> he is, um, there are two hyperlinks. Uh, so links to things. And I go, hey, dad, hold that up to the screen real close. Now show me how you're going to click those links on that piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. He right. had like the perfect response and he's laughing, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like you created this story with the title and thumbnail. Then in the first 15 seconds, I think most people who watch that, especially with the millennials, will laugh because it's just like the boomer trying to use technology. But then also this kind of hook that I'm creating throughout the video is like, let's see if he can, you know, actually go through and build a landing page. And um, yeah, the idea is just kind of like banter throughout the video because I have good banter with my dad. We always kind of laugh at each other and ourselves kind of thing. And then just trying to capture that in a video review and keep attention throughout the video. That's, I mean, I, I think that sounds like a winning formula, right? Just the we'll thumbnail see. as you described it feels like <laughs> one that you'll get some click throughs on. So yeah, yeah. excellent. And I won't make you reveal whether he was successful building the landing page or not. People have to watch the video for that, of course, right? All right. <laughs> See, that's a hook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, because, yeah, we're on our, our compressed kind of timeline here. I'm going to bring us back and make sure we hit all our points on our notes. Um, we talked about YouTube. You're talking about it throughout the whole thing. That is the theme on the Creator Network. Um, I guess in short, why is that your preferred platform? We may have covered this in the last episode, but I think your explanation is such a, um, I don't know, it, it, it appeals to people who, uh, yeah. so I hope you have the same definition as last time we talked about it. Why is that your preferred platform? Hopefully, I feel like it's always changing because I really like analogies and trying to figure out what <laughs> I think makes sense. So hopefully I'm going the right direction here and I don't lay you down, Neil. Go because, for it. Uh, basically, uh, YouTube, when you go there, you just open up YouTube.com and take a look at what you see. Uh, what you'll see typically is a search bar at the top and then content below. So the search bar is a search 
um, focused platform. And then that means people are actually coming here for specific reasons for education on content. And then below is more of like a social network. It's like showing you things that you might be interested in because you subscribed or you watched this and that kind of thing. Um, the way I think of it is like, let's say you were to make content just for LinkedIn. Imagine you're on a hill and you're you're standing like already like a third of the way up the hill and you have to get to the top of the hill. LinkedIn is like trying to run up that hill, right? And uh, as far as YouTube, the way I would describe it is it's trying to bike up that hill. And in my opinion, it's easier to get quick traction running up that hill. Because if you've ever been on a bike all of a sudden where you're on a steep incline, and you have to get going. It's super difficult. Um, so you will get traction quicker on a, a platform like LinkedIn or Facebook, putting video ads on there if you're doing it organically. Um, but the problem with those platforms is the moment you stop feeding them is the moment that people stop viewing your content because people aren't going to Facebook to search for things. They're not going to LinkedIn to search for things. They're going there for the organic feed. And as you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, if it's it's on the feed and it's gone in two days, you know? So uh, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is sometimes people focus so much on those platforms because you get that immediate engagement because those are where your friends are. Um, those are the people you know. And then you kind of hope something goes a little viral, you know, whether it be through a hashtag or whatever. Um, but YouTube is more like you're, it's really hard to get going sometimes because it takes a little bit of time and energy and you're putting content out and not a lot of people are watching it. But what you'll see is over time, if you continue to do it consistently uh, and do it well, that you start getting momentum with what you're doing. And as you know, like if you're on a flat, you know, uh, space and you're running or riding a bike, the bike, you can stop pedaling and it still goes for a while <laughs> right. running like you're done immediately. Yep. So I think when you're just when you're ignoring YouTube, you're ignoring the medium that has the most momentum behind it. That's more like riding a bike. So. All right. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and what you've brought up in the past, this is what I was what I was thinking you would you would hit on is how it's a fair like playing yes. field. Right. Yeah. So yeah. YouTube, they don't change the way that people, you know, consume search or you know they might tweak the algorithm but uh if you have good content and you have the right search words you're going to be found whereas just like you mentioned on linkedin or facebook you feed them content they see you as a creator you're putting stuff out on a regular basis they will show your content to more people whereas if you fall off like you're yep. you're you're back you're back down the hill that's why yeah. the hill analogy roll back <laughs> down to the bottom so, and like, yeah. I think a lot of people are familiar. I don't know if they're still being used that actively. Maybe LinkedIn did away with them, but would they call them like pods or whatever? You'd have like your 10 group of friends and you'd want yeah. to comment right away and you got to do X, Y, Z. YouTube used to be like that, like five, eight years ago. Be like, just get the, you know, go on Fiverr, buy a thousand views, run a few backlinks, that kind of stuff. They've done a masterful job at trying to make the platform um, as much as it can be spam free and just really reward good content. And the way they validate that is by um, viewer retention time. How long do people watch that video for? Uh, yeah. So um, one of my values um, is I like fairness. And I know things aren't fair uh, a lot of times, but I do find YouTube to be an extremely fair platform because I'll make a piece of content sometimes and you know it doesn't do well and I'll look at it and I'll be like, well, yeah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think they made the right call on that one, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, or maybe it was too long and somebody didn't want to watch a 20 yeah. minute video about a paperclip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I'd like to check it out. Yeah, but, it's, uh, it's in the works. <laughs> Paperclip spreadsheet, right? You know, yeah. different manufacturers or something. Well, I do want to plug a few of the, uh, you have been going deep in terms of education information with both uh, the mattress video, which I think we brought up on the last episode. That one's been out for a while, but you just put out a decking material video that mm -hmm. is, uh, I think, timely for a lot of people and has an awesome spreadsheet tied to it with a lot of useful information. Um, because we're getting to the end of our time, if you want to go for one minute on what that video is and um, kind of, I don't know, how people might use it or, or how yep. you started getting into that like spreadsheet driven video content, you know, yep. that would be uh, that'd be interesting. Well, spreadsheets are nice because they're very visual, which lends itself to a visual platform like uh, YouTube. And what I did is I am going to be building a deck this spring, summer. And uh, I was like, I don't really know enough about decking materials. 
so I started researching them and I was like, oh, this can get kind of complicated. Like every board has different, you know, a bottom. Is it three cap, four cap? Is it scalloped? Is it regular? Uh, does it have grooves in the side? Is it sustainable? Uh, is it fire retardant? Like all these different things. So I started putting it into a spreadsheet. And then simply what I did in the video is I go through and I do a extremely detailed review of decking materials. And it uh, correlates with the spreadsheet. And I just gave the spreadsheet away. But as the seasonality of that video has started to kick in because we're going into spring, I'm starting to see like two, three, 400 views a day. All right, I haven't quite hit 400, but I'm expecting that soon. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it got a thousand views a day. So I was like, why don't I build an opt-in form? And I did it via convert kit. And um, you can get this spreadsheet for yourself. So I'm building an email list of people who are bottom of the funnel, like ready to buy decking. And that's mm -hmm. a powerful list. And then I'm just testing and tweaking things and seeing, you know, are there any offers that could make sense for them? Um, and then I'm even trying to connect right now with 84 Lumber, uh, their headquarters. I bet you if nobody's learned anything today from this podcast, they will learn something right now. Neil, where are the headquarters of 84 Lumber? Well, I think you may have brought this up in a, a previous conversation. Are, yeah. Aren't they in Pennsylvania or? Yeah, 84 yep. Pennsylvania. 84 is the name of the town well then you yeah, didn't bring yeah, that very, up <laughs> yeah i know it sounds like you're making it up but that's i, I didn't realize that's how they got their name huh. so i have been able to um create a contact there i sent him some resources he said they're going to discuss it i have no idea my hope is that they will provide the lumber um for free and then we can have some sort of arrangement that i can send them qualified traffic that i'm getting 20 30 people a day right now subscribing um, for this resource and say, hey, 84 Lumber, 250 locations nationwide. Mm. Um, but that's kind of one of the difficult things I have to deal with is trying to sell this idea and the value to companies because I don't right. work in the company. Um, but that's part of the process. Well, and that's probably why you like you find that affiliate setup to work so well, right? If you could be an affiliate for a handful of the manufacturers on your list, that would be another way to monetize that that content, right? Yeah. So yeah, and it's, it's just finding the right affiliate, something you feel good about, um, something you, you feel good recommending. And then yeah, they get, you know, you can help connect that traffic to them, you make some income from it. Uh, and this thing can live potentially for a decade online, just right. generating leads, income, uh, and sales for the affiliates that you're uh, partnered with. Excellent. Well, let's, um, let's talk about you're going to speak to the VidWheel Creator Network on April 22nd. Uh, do you want to tell everybody what you're going to talk about when you're on? Yeah, I think right now what I was going to talk about uh, was uh, something, you know, you may have heard the acronym BFAM, brother from another mother. Uh, I just always liked it. When I used to play basketball, every once in a while, somebody would be like, hey, what's up, BFAM? And I'd be like, my, my heart would pitter-patter. I'd be like, they like me. But <laughs> I was part of their tribe, you know? And um the uh what i'm gonna be talking about is like how to think of building that following because things that you're doing connect with them on a personal level on a niche level on a values level and how you can kind of grow that community that's something i've been learning and figuring out as i go and i'm going to share that and then just kind of talk about youtube and uh, any kind of questions and answers anybody has uh, on the platform excellent and you're you're going to start a course around bfam uh, yes, uh, eventually. And my goal is, could I get something up before this presentation? I don't know. <laughs> I got a few things I'm working on. Um, eventually, right. I will. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to skip to the the last question, the one question that kind of uh, ties all these podcasts together. Um and it's going to be tough for you because I ask, what's one thing you've done to make your your business, your client's business smarter? And you've already done a good one thing back in August. So do you have a new one thing? The one in August was spend money to make money. Don't be afraid to hire out for tasks you're not qualified or you're not don't like doing. Um, do you have one more thing? Yeah, um, for me, uh, I, I took some time. I put together a mind map, you know, got a free one via mindmeister.com. And I put myself at the top of it and I created an org chart because I'm a company of one and I do outsource a few tasks. But I kind of started creating buckets of everything that I do so that I can see the whole process visually because I'm a very visual person. And then now what I'm doing is I'm just picking off 
certain projects and tasks and seeing if there's other things I can outsource. And starting on Mondays, I started doing this three weeks ago, four hours every Monday morning. Hmm. All I do is I look at that org chart and I try to figure out how can I simplify my week? Uh, Because I heard a quote uh, recently and it was just based and you probably heard this too. Time is not a renewable resource. Money is. You can always make more money, but you can't get time back. And that's kind of the way I try to look at my business now is how can I focus on time, getting more of it uh, because it's not a renewable resource. And then the more of that I get, I think that there is going to be momentum behind that because then I have more time to think and be more strategic rather than just do. Uh, So really same thing, spending money to make money, but being more strategic, looking at the org chart, figuring out what I do and don't like doing and trying to find people to fill those roles of the things I don't like doing or I don't do well. Awesome. Now you've got two one things uh, could, you know, and they're both excellent. Uh, Yeah. Time. Right. That that is the that's ultimately the uh, equalizer. Everybody's got the same amount of time. So which is uh, ironic because like we're already a minute past your time because I I know you got kids. Ready, dad, right? <laughs> yep, yeah, I've got to go on to uh, kid duty. Um, yeah, because my wife's got to get to it with work. So with that, I am going to say thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Smarter Business Podcast. Thank you, Eric, for uh, coming out and chatting with us. If you like the content that you hear, please subscribe uh, on YouTube or wherever you consume your podcasts and share this with a friend. For the people watching or listening to the podcast, I'm pointing to the subscription button on the screen, wherever it is. I can't, if it's on your face, Neil, I can't point. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks for having me, Neil. I appreciate it.